Mmm, more telecom batteries. AGMs this time round. These are eight power safe, a Hawker power safe, 12V125F, 125 amp power at a 10 hour rate. Telecom batteries. Suspended electrolyte. Uh, generally rather fancy high reliability models. A lot more practical than my any of my old batteries rally which are flooded, all of them. But uh, they, these are harder to restore and indeed I've never really tried doing any restoration work on large AGM cells before because these are the first ones I've ever owned. They are not new, they are in fact uh, I believe beyond their 12 year specified service life judging from this uh, little stamp on them which says recharge before 14th 10.01 so these are probably 14 years old so indeed not new however they have been used in a proper telecom application they have been uh, connected to a battery management system I picked them up on site and I know that uh, there's been no malfunction of that system and the person who sold them to me said that there had been no alarms they were in generally good nick uh, this is confirmed by the fact that there have been several extended power outages lately so these batteries have been up to performance because else they would have been replaced due to poor performance rather than old age which is the case so they were surprisingly they were rather discharged when I got them but uh, that could be due to the fact that the power outages just haven't given the battery management system enough time to recharge them fully because it's been about a week since the last no not even a week just a couple of days since the last power outage there they were taken out of service the day before yesterday so they <coughs> they just had about a day to recharge and with a 50 amp load on the system already, who knows, there might not be too many amps available for charging. This particular one was considerably more discharged than the others. It had uh, less than 12 volts at the terminals, only 11.9 something. But uh, other than that, the others were in the range of 12.4 to 12.8 volts most being around 12.6 so it's not too bad and this is the one that's hooked up to the lab power supply and indeed it is slowly drawing more and more current so I think there might be some hope for for it too despite it having been obviously kept at a non fully charged state uh, judging from the videos of fellow youtuber Nolgar24 who has a similar kind of batteries. I believe he has a heap of 100 amp hour uh, Enesis uh, data safe batteries, similar but uh, orange in color, and of course with some kind of different materials inside. They seem to be, from his experience, rather durable uh, cells, and indeed all of these seem to be at least holding up. So, I mean, good hopes. I've got more of these coming in the next couple of months, I believe. I might be getting my hands on quite a few of these, actually, because uh, local telecoms replacing a whole heap of them. They should also have some uh, 155 and 170 amp hour cells, as well as some uh, Sun and Shine 300 amp hour 6 volt cells, which I'm very much looking forward to. I. Yeah, I'm a Sun and Shine fanboy, and I like big batteries. About all, these are from 48 volt systems. They were, of course, hooked up in two strings of 4 inch series, so I can use these to construct a 48 volt system for my solar system rather than the current 12 volt system, which is 
way too low voltage to actually be of much uh, utility. I'm going to need to get uh, more panels to, in order to do that, but hey, for batteries of a big expense, and I've got the, some, some of those now, and I'm going to get more cheaply in the future. So I've got to evaluate the uh, condition and performance of these. At the moment they're just uh, charging with about 14 point something volts. Uh, they are, <laughs> the manual says that you're supposed to, when you get them, you charge them at uh, pretty much the fluid voltage. That's quite for a rather high fluid voltage of 13.68 volts. But uh, since these batteries have been in use for over a decade, I'm my job <laughs> in doing this is essentially to disregard all the instructions given and uh, do my best to squeeze some more life out of these. And since they have low cell voltages, I'm inclined to believe that these have suffered from somewhat low charge rather than somewhat high charge, especially since uh, those. Uh, proper telecom battery management systems tend to be very good in the cells, they don't overcharge them like, for, for instance, UPSs do. And they are drawing a bit of current, these are at, connected to this big charge, it should be putting it about 14.3 volts. Uh, the current in these two have, well the current in this one has been dropping Current and this one has been, yeah, it's been dropping. This one I put on just a couple of hours ago, but it's, yeah, it's sitting at the current limit of this little power supply down there. This one, oh, 0.8 amps. This one's dropped a lot. This was one of the more highly charged cells. This one's also very low. These two were low priority. I put this one and those two on charge yesterday when I got them home because they had the lowest voltages. These two are quite high. This one's 12.8 so I haven't bothered charging those yet. I'm out of charge leads. I got just got to let these charge and then I've got to probably construct some kind of uh, automatic uh, turn-off device for my load since these are probably going to have considerable capacity left. I'm not really entirely sure. I don't know what to expect out of them, but judging from the 12 year specified life and the fact that they've been used with a proper battery management system, they probably have somewhere around 70% capacity left, most of them. So that's uh, almost a hundred amp hours and that's 10 hours discharge with this thing and I'm not going to bother sitting around and guarding all of these for 10 hours at a time so yeah need to make some kind of automated system perhaps just an op amp and a potentiometer is this one drawing more or less current? yeah the voltage is slowly going up so it's drawing it's oscillating a bit. This one's been drawing more and more current for the last few hours after I put it on the lab power supply. It was just hooked on onto the big charger before. And uh, this is a nice charger, 30 amps, but its voltage regulation is rather poor. So as soon as you put a bit of load on it, just a couple of amps, the voltage drops to about 14.23 volts there, about, even though it's set to 14.6 of a maximum scale of air. So, since that one was in such poor condition, I put a much lower output impedance charger on it in order to give it a bit of a more of a boost. Since these are AGM cells, which uh, are supposedly fitted with some fancy recombination uh, caps and recombination uh, stuff in them, so they're not supposed to vent a lot, I need to be rather careful about balancing and overcharging them since I don't want to lose any more electrolyte than I need to. Since they seem to be uh, have been uh, suffered from low charge rather than high charge, there's a good chance that they have most of the electrolyte left, but it hasn't boiled away, so that's a good sign. Ugh. 
because, well, you can't refill these. <laughs> if some of one of them is in a horrible condition, I might try to just break my way inside of it and <laughs> try to pour some water into it just for kicks before I throw it out, but I don't think that's going to happen. Either way, I've been rambling on for too long now, so better get on with it. Alright, I took the weak guy off the charger a few minutes ago and it isn't looking too good. I also took the two guys I put on charge at the same time off and as you can see we've got 12.92 volts in. This one which has been drawing a lot more current so it should have received more energy however the cell voltage on the other ones is considerably higher. So this one does look weak but it might not be beyond saving. I noticed it mostly just started getting warm, that's why I took it off. But I've got the load hooked up for a quick test run, so let's see what it does. Hey, there you go. At a 10 amp load, we're definitely getting a reasonable voltage. I'll have a surface charge drain for a moment while I fetch my ammeter to check the current because it's very difficult to get a good connection to these terminals. And indeed we're drawing about 10 amps. So the voltage is still dropping there. But it is above 12 volts which is better than I expected. It kind of looks... Well, it kind of behaves like a kind of half-charged battery, to be honest, because they tend to have this rather good voltage in the beginning when you kind of start depleting the probably single bad cell, and then it kind of drops off towards 11 volts. But if this was just a battery with bad internal resistance all over, in my experience, that would make the voltage drop lower right away. It wouldn't have taken that little... Uh, pause there at around 12.6. So what I believe what's happening mostly in this battery is a single weak cell, or one that has a higher internal resistance than the others. Let's just do a quick comparison to one of these guys. The leftmost one seems to be the strongest because this one seems to be leveling out at around 11.9. Alright, starting off at 13.355. Let's see what happens. It is certainly dropping slower. The other one went down below 13. Well, it started off below 13. So, we certainly do have a lower internal resistance. Well, we have a, a, higher, a higher surface charge on this one. We can't really say anything else. But this one started to slow down at around 12.6. So, sir. Let's see what this one does. It took a couple of minutes for it to get there. Uh, this one's definitely going to drop below 12.6 rather quickly as well. Hmm. This is a good sign for this one, since it implies that this obviously better condition battery, due to the uh, higher charge uh, state I got it in, uh, also has a somewhat high internal resistance. So, it essentially tells me that these two batteries aren't very different. They might both be in somewhat poor condition, but that doesn't really matter. Because what's important in this application is that as many batteries as possible, or at least strings of four, are in similar condition, so that they can be used in a series system, rather than just being paralleled up like my current system, because when you have many <laughs> identical batteries, hey, you want to run a higher voltage system because that gets your efficiency up no matter what you're doing. And this one's indeed going to drop below 12 volts, but it is leveling off sooner. So it's certainly in better condition. And um, this battery is leveling off at eh, about 12 volts. No point in going further than that. So it is in better condition, but it's. I was expecting there to be more difference between these batteries, and I'm very pleased to see that there isn't. The weak one isn't 
to recovering to a very high voltage either, which would imply that it isn't fully charged. This one I would suspect to be recovering to, yeah, it's going to recover to a high voltage. So, I think I'm going to have to put this one back on the charger and let it charge for another while. It was drawing 4 amps, it was current limiting the power supply. And a definite good sign is that now when I did put the charger on, the voltage is not spiking up right away, but the battery is sticking to its guns and pulling the voltage down. Uh, should be about 12.6 or so across the battery, 12.5, do get a quite a bit of a drop in the cables and connections. But this certainly looks a bit, bit more promising because despite the battery voltage being 11.9 volts yesterday when I got it, the voltage went right up above 13 volts as soon as I put the charger on it. We started out at about 12.3 or so now, which means that we've got a battery that's more willing to accept charge than when I got it. So. We, I have managed to do something good for this battery in letting it charge until it got warm. So I'll put the voltage limit on the charger to 14.2 volts now, which will be probably around 14 volts across the terminals. In order to be a bit kinder to it, I don't want to run the voltage higher than I need to in order to minimize electrolysis. So here is the first prototype of the, the timing circuit that I'm constructing for testing the batteries. It's uh, real simple, it's just built around a single LM324 op amp and uh, a <laughs> an old clock. And a few hours later we have a little board. This, since this is a two conductor relay I can, for instance, connect it the power supply to my load to one of the contacts and a battery charger and the battery to the other so that once the testing is finished and this relay switches its uh, setting like that it'll actually hook up a battery charger and charge the battery back up automatically good news the testing system worked perfectly Bad news, I stopped this timer after I noticed it's finished at t 20 minutes. That's about 4 amp hours. So, that battery can be matched by that. It seems I've got a project ahead of me because that's frankly just pathetic. 4 amp hours. I certainly hope that the others are better. Else I just bought myself a trip to the scrapyard. And thankfully testing the leftmost battery now it seems to have a bit more juice to it. Uh, the this one didn't even manage to push the voltage up at all. It just went down to about 11.7 and then dropped like a stone. Whereas this one's pushing it back up as a healthy lead as a battery should. It's about 5 minutes into the test. So this is... is <laughs> Thank goodness this one is looking better. Gonna have to see how far it rises, it's actually going rather quickly. Hmm. Fingers crossed. Come on. Turn around. This battery is certainly better than the worst one, thank goodness, because it's almost run for as long as it did, and it's still climbing in voltage. So, 
Yeah, perhaps this one will get a 40 amp hour mark, rather than 4. It certainly is climbing stubbornly. I don't think I've ever seen a battery climb for almost 17 minutes before. They usually settle within yeah, about 10. Uh, there we go. 20 minutes and now we're just starting to turn around. <laughs> very, very, very slowly. And it certainly is showing promise. Running in 4 hours 15 minutes thus far. And with over 11.5 volts left. Hmm. More than 10 times <laughs> the capacity of this guy. So that's a relief. Even if all of these are about this capacity, I'd be happy. I mean, if all of them were 40 amp hours, I'd be satisfied. But uh, by the looks of it, this is going to be closer to 100, I'd say. Maybe not all the way, but I would be surprised if this battery was in the less than 80 amp hours. But I think we're going to have to find that out in the morning. And during the night, well, we've got a little problem with this, and that's that. Uh, there was a power outage during the night, which for some reason tripped the ground fault interrupter. And that, w that wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that it prevented my UPS that's running all of this from going back to mains. So I'm not entirely sure if this result is accurate, because the test might have been cut short in the middle if it ran out of battery. The power outage was just in the right time for for it to produce a result kind of like this, so I have no idea if this can be trusted or not. It seemed as if the battery had charged once I got up because it had over 12 volts in it. But, yeah, yeah, a bit iffy it is. So, I'm just going to ignore this result essentially and retest this battery after I let it charge back up. At least it's uh, 55 amp hours at the least. Probably it is that much because it seemed to have had time to charge on the UPS power, but yeah, nothing conclusive. Either way, while that one's charging, I've swapped it to the big charger to give it a bit more juice. I'm going to have to try and test another one of these. That's probably going to have to be this guy, because he's been charging for a rather long time now. It's running on that little power supply down there. And it's been steadily dropping current since I put it on. It started out at uh, current limiting at 2.04 amps. And it was 850 milliamps the last time I checked it, which I think was a few hours ago. Yeah, still dropping just a bit, but just for kicks, I'm going to give this one a little go first, since it will probably be over quite quickly. Who knows, it might be possible for it to make a recovery. The voltage certainly seems to be dropping slower this time. And would you look at that? It's pushing the voltage back up. So that last cycle must have done something good to it. Hmm. What a pleasant surprise. I don't think this one can be saved, but it's nice seeing an improvement. Gives me more data to go on. Whether or not just cycling batteries actually does them any good. Perhaps it's even gonna go about 12 volts. Okay, well that certainly was worth trying to do this since we've more than doubled right around triples the capacity of a battery. And it's still going strong. Hmm. It seems as if we're going to end up somewhere around 20 amp hours. Probably I'm probably being a bit optimistic this time, but let's say 15. No, no, that's unrealistic for 11.6 volts. 
I'm going to say 20 amperes on this one. <laughs> so that means by cycling this battery once and recharging it, we've more than quadrupled its capacity. That's a rather significant improvement, and it's enough to make this battery somewhat useful. I just... <laughs> I can't wait to see what the, what's going to happen once I cycle it a bit more. Sweet! And wouldn't you know it, almost 15 ampere is spot on. Alright, just took this guy off the charger, and it's looking quite good. The voltage is dropping very slowly. It isn't drooping anywhere near 12 at 13 volts. So, I've reset the timer. Let's see what happens when we flick it on. Sticking above 13 volts for a reasonable amount of time. Gonna get back to you when this stabilizes. There we go. Turning around at 11.96 volts. About 5 minutes in. Which is looking good. It's somewhat similar to the second battery I tested, the one over there, so with a bit of luck it's similar in performance. But sadly I misjudged that one as well, I'm making it come in at about 15 amp hours too. So it is a better starting point than the 4 amp hour one, but yeah, that's hardly as impressive as the 55 amp hour one. But I'm reasonably certain that this one is going to come up better on the next cycle. Either way, onward and upward, just have to test the next one I suppose. Alright, so I just caught one of the batteries. Huh. Finishing the discharge, now there we got to see the discharge controller in action on the big battery. Didn't even get to finish my sentence, and now it's charging back up, pushing current into the battery, it's not just recovering. Uh, this particular battery was at 65.8 amp hours this time around, which is a slight improvement over the last result of 65. And after having so gently cycled these batteries for Many days in a row, uh, we've started to notice a few trends. Namely, that there are four good ones and four bad ones. Uh, this one has about 60 amperes of capacity, and so does this one and those two. This one's even 70 after just one cycle or a couple. And the rest are, this one's about 40, and it's getting warm by getting charged. This one's 15, this one's 9. Started out at 7.5. And, and uh, the bad one's just slowly gaining a bit of capacity every cycle, got, having gone from 4 amperes to 15, 22.5, and 27.5 on the last cycle. So I'm probably going to get. Uh, four good batteries, at least in the immediate future, out of these. Again, all of them are gaining capacity with each charge-discharge cycle I put them through. Uh, they're all sitting at uh, a topping charge of 14.4 volts between cycles, and I'm cycling them as fast as I can using my 10 amp load. So, they're getting cycled and charged and cycled and charged and cycled and charged. I think I'm well, this one's got the original note, so I'm at the fourth cycle thus far. Probably going to have to do about ten cycles before they start to show their real stable capacity. Another thing I've noticed in doing this, as I've noticed with the other batteries I've restored, the flooded types, is that the more cycles I put them through, the lower the internal resistance gets. And indeed, all of these batteries started out dropping to below 12 volts, far below 12 volts when you just turn the load on. All of them, including this one and the 7.5 amp one, are staying about at about 12.1 to 12.2 volts now. So even if uh, these do not uh, regain any great amount of capacity, there certainly is a uh, potential for improvement in the impedance. 
since uh, well below 11 volts to over 12.1 volts is a that's a step from a rather poor battery to a not very good but by far acceptable one so that's a bit of experience I suppose either way I'm gonna cut this video short now because I'm not going to be shooting anything more about all these batteries for a while indeed I'm probably gonna stick all of these on a normal 13.68 volt float charge for a bit of time I have two reasons for that one of them is secret the other one is these which are similar batteries except they are seven years newer and they are a hundred and seventy amp hours at the two hour rate which is rather impressive and what's even more impressive is that these were only replaced due to the corroded terminals on them and I've measured the voltage on them and all of them are within 13.25 through 13.3 volts so these appear to be in very similar and very good very good condition only load testing will tell but I am far more optimistic about these than I ever was about these or indeed any other batteries I've ever brought home I mean <laughs> they're from 2008 they're practically brand new these have a 12 year life cycle so Cheerio.